Perry's not like not really friendly as an athlete. Listen, I was smart after the race. That's how I was. I weren't trying to talk to people beforehand. That's just how I got into my zone. But it worked for me. Some athletes can talk and have that conversation beforehand. Not me. They didn't understand that part of you effectively. Yeah. When you're on the track, you're my enemy. Mm. That's how I saw it. I thought if, you, if they would see me smiling, it's like, oh no, they've seen the, the nice part yeah. of it. <laughs> Just be nice to other girls because as a force, we are a whole lot stronger when we stick together. I've heard that. That's because you said it. She's <laughs> <laughs> oh, thinking, which wise person no, said no, that? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I really like that. <laughs> I did a 10 minute run this morning just yeah. to figure out what's what's it like in Perry's world. I was I was puffing. <laughs> Imagine he said to me, I'm going for a run this morning. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be I'll, I'll be back. This guy came back and honestly it felt like five minutes. I said, I thought you said you were going for a run. It was intense, it was intense. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Teddy Talks. Thank you for joining us again. You know how much we love you joining us every single week. We appreciate it. My name is Teddy Suarez. I'm joined by my brother, Sydney Suarez. We have a very special guest on today as well. She's the legendary 400 meter hurdler. She's also won gold in the 400 meter relay race. Um, she's also broken records, if it wasn't enough, in 400 meter racing in general, and also has won silver, bronze. She's retired, a devoted mother, wife. She's done a couple of shows as well, a handful yeah. of shows. I've also had the privilege of joining her on one of those shows. We were battling it out in the trenches on SAS Who Dares Wins. Her name is Perry Edwards. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, Perry. What a nice introduction. Yeah, Teddy. you deserve it. You deserve Thank it. You. you deserve your flowers. I think um, my brother as well, he is very fond of you. Um, Great energy, a bundle of energy. I couldn't wait to have you on and speak to you, get to know you a bit more and hear some of the stories you could share with us. Got a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute since we saw each other as well, hasn't it? Like, I think the last time we saw each other was we had like the get together, the screening. Yes, the SAS screening. So right around the time when SAS came out, that's kind of when we all, well, most of us got together. Yep. Um, we had a little catch up and um, yeah, it's good. It's good to see you looking well. Thank you. Um, how, how is Perry? How, how are you in your present moment where your mind is at mentally? I'm good. Mm. I feel like January, um, I kind of allowed time for myself mm. um, to think. Um, and I say it in a sense of, I consume a lot of social media, yeah? I've been honest with you. And I felt like, let's stop consuming and you need to think for yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. Like in terms of what do I want to create? I'm just so much involved and want to know what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took a break from that. Um, and I might, say, might not sound long, but for me, a month was long for someone mm -hmm. who's always on it. And it is something that I, I do earn money from as well. So there were kind of pros and cons as to why I was yes. staying away from it. And you know, like when you stay away from it, it's like, mm, but people need to know what you're up to. Yeah, that you have an audience. You have people that are like wanting to see you every day almost. But it was like, no, let's prioritize. So um, I did that, I feel better for it. And I realized you don't always have to post every day. Mm. If you're gonna come with something, it's gotta be knowledgeable, maybe funny, something oh you're you know? always funny you're right always. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like yeah like other than that I'm good family life is good I'm good. seeing my son grow up rapidly Amazing. everyone always thinks he's older than what he is because my husband's six foot six I'm what five eight and we have a child that is just very long and everyone thinks he's older <laughs> than what he is yeah he's very long tall um so yeah no I'm enjoying motherhood that is where I'm at at the moment how old is your child? He's three. He's three. Yeah, my son Matthew is three years old and he just surprises us every day. The things he comes up with. He's like, whoa, whoa where'd you learn that? Is he talking? Yeah, yeah very wow. well. It's just like, 
yeah, it's, it's parenthood, yeah, being a mother, I love it. I really do. So can you tell already whether or not he's a, a mummy's boy or a, a, a daddy's boy? What What do you think? He's a mummy's boy. He's a mummy's boy. <laughs> I don't, think, I, don't think my, I don't think my husband likes it. He laughs, yeah. He don't, honestly knows, doesn't like it. But yeah, my son, it's everything's mummy this, mummy that. And I'm like, ooh. And I, you know, I try and throw some of like responsibilities to my husband so yeah. he don't feel left out. Because I felt like the left out stage would have been the early stages. Like um, when I gave birth to my son, obviously the breastfeeding and things like that. I thought, oh, only I could do that. Yes, but My yes. son's now free and he's still calling for mummy. So it's a bit like, oh, yeah. He's a mummy's. He's a mummy's boy. He really is. I love, I love that. it. Sorry, Mike. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's <laughs> I, I actually had the privilege of meeting Mike actually at one of the screenings, and I, I actually do remember just looking up at him like, "Damn, he's tall. He is <laughs> actually really tall. Like, no joke." He and that's why I don't. Yeah. Mind, I don't mind wearing heels when I'm with him. Yeah, because yeah? it's like he, he's still he's still taller than me. Because mm. in the past I've had relationships where me and the guy may be the same height or something. You're like, oh, now I'm towering over here. <laughs> Cute. I'm gonna have to bend down, take a photo. You don't think that matter? I was like, yeah, I don't have that issue anymore. <laughs> Some of those heels had to go to the archive. It's like, I can't even wear this on this date right now. Just make this guy look really small. Uh, we have an opening tradition though. So, uh, part of our podcast, we like to um, delve into quotes uh, quotes that are meaningful to you, that's helped you through challenging moments through your life. I, I can imagine you've had so many moments training. Um, be it actually on the day of race day, which I'm I'm really curious to dig into what that day is like as well. But what 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 do you tend to live by, affirmation wise or quote wise, on a day to day? I I like to go by, and I've done this from when I was an athlete. What you put into something, you're going to get out of it. I love that. And to me, it was the hard work that paid off for my athletics career. Mm. And I often say to myself. Perry, have that same energy that you had as an athlete and apply it to your life now and you you can go far. But I I, I tend to drip off sometimes. Mm. I'm like, you got to put the work in. Nothing happens overnight because my career never happened overnight. Mm. You you know, I put put years into that. Blood, sweat and tears, I can imagine. To to get to be an Olympic athlete. Mm. That's really, really... Um, powerful I think that resonates even when you say that it applies to other aspects of life as well when I when I think of you as you were talking about your children you know uh, or or your child I should say I don't want to I don't want to confuse anyone make make them think this yeah 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 I'm not expecting. <laughs> I'm not getting. You're speaking of future tense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, someone knocking on the door. What do you mean, children? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so even when you, you, you spoke about that, it really made me think back to that and the time you put in with, you know, your family, your loved ones, whatever you put into that situation, the love, you will get out to some extent. You know, if you ignore those loved ones around you in your bubble, um, what is that going to be like as well by focusing on just the racing? Um, but Teddy, I did I did that. Mm. That's the thing. Like, So as an athlete, you're very selfish. Mm. Nothing else really mattered he says, except I need to run faster. Mm. I want to win that medal. You know, I want to be at that championships. And um, so I would say I was very much a selfish athlete and you have to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that's not my life now. My, I'm very selfless. I have a son. He's my priority. My husband, another priority. The home. Keep the, the family home has to be happy. Mm. Beforehand, it was all about me, me. No. And I thought I would not be able to become a mother because of how selfish I was. Really? But I've changed. Yeah. I want the best for my son. And I, what I put into him, I'm going to see and reap those rewards in the future that's how i see it and both me and my husband we were very much invested in our son that's yeah. that's beautiful when you say you you were selfish I, I can't imagine you being selfish just your your energy doesn't come across like that do you mean that you always prioritize yourself first like wh- what do you mean yeah by being selfish? so definitely prioritize myself first training came first mm. so that meant if there was um a wedding um, birthday parties, special occasions, you wouldn't see me. 
don't get me wrong, I felt a bit bad. I did feel like I was missing out. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, me come to celebrate with you, that's me missing out a piece to my training. Sorry, gonna have to give, give this one a miss. I was very much like that. And I, my coach as well, as well, was very much like that. We put the time and effort into something. And it's like, yeah, I had to say no to quite a few things. Um, so you had get, your boundaries Yeah And there was a time also When I was really young I say around the age of Say like I'm going to say 14 And um, I felt like the training I really felt like I was missing out I didn't think it was cool To be an athlete um, To be doing all this training And I said to my coach Oh yeah I don't want to do this He was like okay go ahead Fair enough It's up to you So I thought hanging out with my friends will be cool. Within two weeks, I was back. I was back at the track. I said, no, nah, that's not cool. I actually loved the track. Wow. Um, so it's like, yeah, you feel like the grass is green on the other side. But when you go and experience, it's like, nah. nah get me back to where I Yeah, at the I time, belong. it wasn't cool. I'm going to be on to you. Being an athlete wasn't cool. Even down <laughs> to the footwear. My trainers that I would wear, for, for, I would change them because I was embarrassed about how I looked. Did they have spikes back then? So we had the spikes, yeah. but they were obviously for the track. But you know, like when you're doing like your, the workout running footwear, they weren't cool. Yeah. They've actually come back in fashion now though. Oh, really? actually. It's funny. I find myself <laughs> wearing the trainers that I thought wasn't cool back then. I'm wearing them now. You know, fashion repeats yeah. itself. So, um, after I got over that barrier, as I've got older and obviously, you know, um, fashion and things have changed. And now I see people wearing workout clothes on a daily. They oh, might not yes. even go to the gym. Yeah. That's the thing now. It's like, wow, this wasn't cool when I was growing up. And I'm glad that I stuck with it. Mm. So that's what it takes to get to your level, right? You have to say no and know where your boundaries are. Yes. How uh, did that impact the relationships with people? Because like your family, the the... Was that cousins, weddings and birthdays right. and things so like that? So they didn't really hold it against me, mm. I must say. I think I was more like, um, well, you know I'm competing. Now I've got this competition. Why don't you change the date? That's how my mentality was. But no one ain't changing the food. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not, the world does not evolve around you, Perry. Sorry. <laughs> so if you're there or not, we don't care. But my friends, I found, I feel like everyone kept me at a distance. Mm. And I say that in a sense, I didn't get invited to many places from my friends because I felt like they were like, she's going to say no. So why are we inviting her? So I got I got a lot of that. Um, but then these friendships have actually kind of rekindled as I've got older. Oh, amazing. Yeah, which yeah. is nice. But some of them, they, they, were, they stayed there. It just wasn't meant to be, you mm. know? But there were times I was like, yeah, some of my friends probably thought, nah. She's too busy, so we just kind of leave her. And I did go through that. Mm. Um, so speaking of friendships and um, relationships with, with your girlfriend and everything, I think it's a great segue for me to introduce this quote. And you, you might know who said it. Okay. Just be nice to other girls because as a force, we are a whole lot stronger when we stick together. I've heard that. That's because you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, She's thinking, which wise person <laughs> said that? <laughs> that is a good one. I really like that. Why, why, why do you feel that may have come out of you in the past, like from past experiences? Um, can we go? Can you say it again, please? Because I'm um, when I, when you was reading it, I was like, I know this. Who do I know it from? But I want to hear it again. Mm -hmm. Just be nice to other girls because as a force, we are a whole lot stronger when we stick together. It's true. I believe as well, women should empower one another. Not a competition. Um, even like complimenting and encouraging another female. I think mm. that's great. If you see a lady or if you see someone looking really nice, say, yeah, you look, mm. I like the outfit. You know, you smell good. Things like that because... It makes a difference, mm -hmm. even down to smiling. A lot mm -hmm. of people say, you really made my day. Me, just by like smiling, you don't have to frown. Mm. Trust me, my life is not always rosy. There's a lot going on, but to smile doesn't cost nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and I find myself at times, I have to smile at certain situations and you don't know how you can impact another person. And it's just a simple gesture. As females now, sorry, I don't always feel like it's the case that we are together. And when you say friendships and my girls and stuff, I probably have like a handful of friends. A and small bubble. Very small. Mm. 
don't get me wrong, when I was younger, it was like, how many? You want loads? Listen, I can't spread my arms that, that wide at all. And now I have a family. That is not the priority. You know, friendships. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really not. And my family are really my friends. I've got my cousins. Mm-hmm. I have cousins who are very close to me. We are like sisters. My mom, I'm very close to. Um, even my dad. So my family, they are my priority. And then I've got a few friends who I'll say, you're like family. But yeah, I tend to keep it small now. And it's no stress. It's just like, yeah, you don't have to answer to many. It's nice. It's small. I like it that way. Peace. Mm. I like peace. That's what I realized. Peace is very important when you're running a happy family, a happy home. Yeah. And I found it also hard saying no. As much as I said I was selfish, I still would try and please everybody. Mm. That was another thing that I used to do. Now I'm a mature woman. It's like, sorry, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Because you can't please everybody. Uh, I think we've spoke about this before as well. Um, I, I wanted to go back to that mindset of empowerment. When when did that kick in? Because I can imagine when you are competing, you have to kind of grit your teeth a little bit against the people you're up against. Mm-hmm. Um, so when, when did that empowerment mindset really kick in for you when you thought, actually, us women, we need to really stick together and we need to um, empower each other almost in what we're doing and how we move, how we react, how we behave? Um, I think maybe that came from definitely my upbringing. Mm. Like I said, my mom, my aunties, my granny, they very much were involved in my upbringing. Yes, my dad is about, yeah, I have a very good relationship with my, with my dad, but you know, it, he wasn't around as much when I say when I was younger. So mm. all I looked up to were females in my life Mm. Um, my mum was very much hard working Um, she worked how many jobs but she never seemed like she was down that was the glory my mum could be going through something but I wouldn't know I had no idea everyone in my family the females just worked hard we got on it got on with things we knew how to have fun yeah as much as we're going through something we we know how to smile you know and enjoy ourselves and celebrate everything my family we love to celebrate everything It's, it's so nice actually um, because people would then come up to me and be like, oh, you're really close with your family. I wish I had that, you know? And it's just like, oh, I didn't see it as any, like, anything special. It's just like... It's normal. Yeah. It's normal mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to dive back to to the beginning. You know, you, you grew up in London, right? East London. And East London. And I want to know what it's like as a young black woman going on the path of becoming an athlete back then. What was it like for you, you know, navigating a world which is so much different right now? Yeah. We don't have social media. Challenges back then was completely different. Mm -hmm. What were the sort of things that you had to go through to to get to where you are now? You know what I would say? I'm glad social media wasn't as hot then as it is now. And I say it is a sense that social media can be like a distraction and you're comparing yourself too much. See, when I was like training as an athlete, listen, you only would see me if he was walking past a track and I'll get people hailing me going, go on girl, mm. keep doing your thing. And all I was doing, keeping my head down and just plodding along. That's exactly what I was doing. But then they were seeing results. Then I would appear in my local newspaper and people were like, oh, we saw you in the East London advertiser, you know, and people were very much, you know, supporting, um, supporting me, but, not really know what I was up to and what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I never actually aspired to be an athlete growing up. Um, it, I think, I feel like athletics found me because I first got introduced to it through primary school. And my teacher said to me, you know, you should go down to the local track, Perry, join a club, because I used to do cross countries. And That's I was, hard. I know. So, exactly, see, I, start, I started off with <laughs> <laughs> the distance one. <laughs> But I really didn't have the lungs for it. And then as I as I've joined a club, I found my coach and he was like, No, try a slight shorter distance. We're gonna we're gonna work this out for you. Wait, four hundred meters is short? That's not short. Oh, yeah. No way. Oh, I did a ten minute run this morning just yes. to figure out what's what's it like in Perry's <laughs> world. I was I was puffing. <laughs> Imagine he said to me, I'm going for a run this morning. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be I'll I'll be back. 
This guy came back and honestly, it felt like five minutes. I said, I thought you said you were going for a run. It was intense, it was intense. <laughs> Bless you for trying. Yeah, 400 meters is short. 400 meters is short. And 10 minutes also now, that is short for me too. Oh, now. really? Yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah, this morning I got a 30 minute run actually. Yeah. I need to pull my nice. socks off and get nice. back on the track. Like, yeah. Well, you, yeah, I've, I've dwelled into like marathons and things like that. Wow. I'm actually doing a half one in the beginning of April. After I said I'd done my first marathon, I said, you know, I'll give it a few couple of years, I'll do my next one. But then I got persuaded and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the half marathon. And you know what it is as well? I trained with my brother. That was really nice. It brought us really close. Mm. The fact that we'd meet up and say, we're going to go for a run with each other. Mm. Because it's, yes, my family have a sporting background, but not everyone, I would say, I was the only one who kind of went to the highest level. But we're very competitive. And the fact that me and brother can do something, like work out together, it's nice. So mm. Brings you closer. Yeah. yeah. Of course, that's amazing. And and you know, uh, you were saying through, through the uh, whole of your community, sort of seeing you in the papers and everything. Ha how did that how did that experience affect your humility because i can imagine that at such a young age you got everyone around you sort of revering that you you're you're the it person in your area did, did you feel sometimes they put some pressure on me that i didn't need you know oh really yeah so it was nice but sometimes like, oh, all right they were like putting gold medals and things on my neck before even achieving them mm, and i was oh. like it's not that easy that's mm. like, that's the response i used to used to kind of throw back at people it's like I wish I, it was that easy, but all I'm going to do is put my work, my put hard work into it, hoping for a great result. Mm. Um, but it was cute, it was nice, but then some people just don't didn't get it because even sometimes if you say you didn't get a gold medal, people are like ah. First thing people ask is, did you win? Especially when it came to the Olympics, mm. did you win? No, I never, I never won. But saying that you're Olympian, not many people can say that, mm. and it it was it took a lot, you know. So uh, yeah, sometimes people just don't understand, um, but then they, they there was respect there. You know, mm. people do respect me and say they miss me. People say they missed you. Getting back on the track. Yeah, that's interesting because the the pressure is 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 um, something that people don't really try and understand. It's all about, as you said, did you win? Did you come first? Yeah. They don't consider silver or bronze yeah. as a success, even though. You know, first Yay. hand it is. Exactly. Um, the records you were breaking as well is 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 a testament to that as well. Yeah, it's I think like, it was in 2013 or 2014 you ran the fastest 400 meter race in that year. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember that time? That was on fire. 2013. Talk us through 20. like the mindset leading up to that, and when you when you broke the record, like, what, how did you feel? Because. 2013 was a good and bad year for me, but we're going to, we're going to start with the good. Mm -hmm. So I was on fire that year. Um, so I'd done the indoors, 400 meter indoors. Bear in mind, I'm a 400 meter hurdler, but I, I had that speed in me to do the 400 meter flat. And going into that indoors gave me confidence. The back of an Olympic Games, that's what happened. The, the Olympic Games never went well for me because I missed out on the final by 0 0.01 seconds. Oh, no way. Wow. Devastated. I was heartbroken. Um, so with that, def I felt defeated. Yeah, I was very upset. So I channeled that, used that energy and took it into my training for 2013. So when it came to indoors, I was like, this, no one's going to touch me. I'm, I just saw, I just saw like, the finish line. I don't see anybody else. That's how my mentality is. I don't see anybody else. Even I feel like some people may have even thought, oh, Perry's not, like, not really friendly as an athlete. Listen, I'll smile after the race. That's how I was. I wasn't trying to talk to people beforehand. That's just how I got into my zone. But it worked for me. Some athletes can talk and have a conversation beforehand. Not me. So I don't really have many friends in the athletics kind of, um, kind of, yeah. They didn't Steve. understand that part of you effectively. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah. They got me friends. But yeah, it's just mm. <laughs> when you're on the track, you're my enemy. Mm. That's how I saw it. I thought if you, if they would see me smiling, it's like, oh no, they've seen the, the nice part yeah. of me. <laughs> no, the weak side of me. <laughs> but no, no. Very, yeah. very competitive. So yes. when you were when you were in those races, right, 
because you've you, you've been in those moments so many times before you know to, to, to get successful you have to fail right and when when you're in those races and it's getting hard and maybe on the second or third lap or whatever it is i'm i'm not too experienced when it comes to long distance running when you're feeling tired like what what's going through your mind and you're when you're thinking yo like these guys are on my neck and i need to get to the finish line like, how do you, what's the self talk or, or are you just in a zone? You've done that run so many times. No. Or are you yeah. even tired? <laughs> <laughs> I am tired. You know what? My mom told me one. My mom said to me one time. My mom always told me never get complacent. Mm. Someone's always come trying to get your spot. But she would say, pretend the dog is chasing you. When I come to the finish, bear in mind we're tired. <laughs> yeah, your legs feel like jelly. But she's like, pretend the dog's chasing you. I was like, okay, mom, yeah, I'll pretend the dog's chasing me. No chance I'm going to be one of those fast. The dog's chasing me, you know? <laughs> what? But it stuck in my head. I was like, you know? But yeah, no, that is actually quite funny. But yeah, it's very, a lot of mental toughness. You train for that as well. Because my coach would give me sessions whereby I'd be exhausted. Um, and you're like, okay, you're tired, but you got to go again. Especially when you have to do reps and you're aiming for the same similar time. For instance, one session I remember really well is when you had to do 200 meters. And you had to do them in 60, 60 seconds. And I think I maybe had to do about, uh, let's say I had to do 10 or something. At 60 seconds, my PB's what? At the time was like 50, 51 or something. So you're like, this is easy because it's, Hey, no, no, no. When you have less recovery and you've got to try and get that time all the time, it's like, yeah, exhausting. But my coach done a very good job at training. When you're exhausted, listen, you stand up, get your positioning right, and we go again. So I've definitely, I, I got called a name, La Beast from East. That was my Beast name. from East. East. Yeah, because I'm like, damn, this girl keeps going. She just, <laughs> she's tired, but she keeps going. Yeah, because I'm thinking about that dog that's chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> It's making me think about this um, this moment in Portugal when um, we used to play outside near, near one of our older homes, and there was uh, there's like an alleyway. On the other side of it, there's houses, and on the other side of it, there's houses. And we used to play in the alleyway, and there was a a, a small dog got let out into the alley alleyway whilst we we're playing football, and I ran in one direction, Teddy ran in the other direction, but the dog <laughs> followed Teddy. And Teddy was just screaming while he was running. He had the ball in his hand and threw the ball at the dog. <laughs> it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Still remember it like it was yesterday. We must have been like five or six years old. The, the dog time. didn't even care about the ball. I thought I thought he was gonna go and play. He just yeah. after me. And at that point, I'm crying now. I'm just like, this dog's about to chew me. I'm so small as well. But I found a love for dogs. Again. I was gonna say, did that did, did that not scar you? <laughs> no, no, no. I think for a while to... it did. For yeah. a while, I was just like, dogs for some reason like chasing me for the wrong reasons. But then I found out why they're chasing you. They're chasing you because they want to play. Hey, right? yeah. So I didn't understand that for a very long part of my childhood. <laughs> and the dog, the dog, the dog actually thought you were playing. Yeah. The fact that you're running, I don't know, I've chucked a ball. The dog for yeah, this is playtime. I was, dipping. Yeah. I was gone. <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> I've never seen a man run that fast. I thought this maybe he's got high hopes for a hundred meter run. run. <laughs> he was fierce. See? Oh my god! Um, I wanted to tap into a conversation we had on SAS because, um, and obviously we'll talk about a bit more about SAS as well. But I, I remember whilst we were on a way to one of the tasks, mm -hmm. we were talking. Um, very much about your life. You told me Mike was uh, Nigerian and you'd been to Nigeria as well. Um, and then it prompted me to kind of tell you, oh, actually, I've, I've been really thinking of going to Nigeria and tapping into the culture. And what really stuck with me was um, the impetus you had to sort of tell me that connect with your culture is so important. Um, so today I wanted to kind of dive deeper into it because let's be honest, SAS, I didn't have the time to be like, well, can, yeah. Harry, what, what's culture mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember Teddy was on a sweaty bus. <laughs> we sat next to each other and we had a good old chat because the journey was long, It was wasn't a it? long old journey. It was, it was yeah. long, so it's like, yeah. We hadn't spoken before that. Mm -mm. That's the thing, we hadn't spoken oh, really? before that. Yeah, we'd seen each other in a hotel. We'd say hello, mm. first time meeting and on the bus. 
yeah, I sent this and said, yeah, we just sparked a conversation and we could have kept going and going. But Honestly. Then, then it was like, right, guys, do do. It's like, and get it's into like, the oh, zone. Uh, yeah, got to go now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chat to you later. Yeah. But that, that moment really stuck with me. So today I want to kind of dive into what culture means to you and how it's influenced your life and where you are today, especially now that you're, as I said earlier, you're, you're a mother and a devoted wife. So it's, you know, you, you'd be imparting that part of you onto the next generation as well. So what, what, what does it mean to you in your life? Culture means a lot mm. to me. And I say that I feel I don't want to be lost. Mm. So I make a conscious effort to learn, or I did, I learned from my grandparents mm. in terms of, if anything, they're cooking. So I have um, Grenadian and Jamaican background. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my heritage. And my mum and my dad, well, I learned a bit from my dad, but it was my grandparents who definitely, it wasn't forced on me. Mm. I'm like, I need to learn how to cook some of these dishes. So I, I did that and I continue to cook food like that at home. And, you know, Matthew enjoys the food, um, going back to the country. So I've, um, I've been to Jamaica plenty of times because my mum would take me from a young child to the point I'd be like, mum, there's other, there's other countries in the world. <laughs> Why would you we keep going? Which flying over, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it's not until I was older and I can afford it myself that I've explored, you know. And in terms of like Grenada, I've only been there twice. Mm. Um, but, and that was my own, on my own time. And I said, I need to go. I'm 30 years old and I have not been to my granny's home. So one time I was training in um, Florida went down to Miami, booked a flight. I think I think we had a weekend off. I was like, I'm going to go to Grenada. Wow. So I did that and went and spent time with my granny. And I was like, imagine that. It's big 30 and I've not been here. And I, I proudly say I'm Grenadian, but I don't know much about it. Mm -hmm. In a way, you, you kind of feel a bit embarrassed. And it's like, when people ask, oh, so where, where are you from in Grenada? You're like, mm, you probably, I'll probably say where the airport is because that's mm -hmm. all I know. Do you know things like that? So <laughs> I made a conscious effort to go to Grenada and I'm glad I did. Then I went another year. Unfortunately, my granny was, was very poorly. So I said, I'm going. Mm. So that's the second time. But what I want to do, you know, is go back. Um, yeah, I brought Matthew with me. That was nice. I got to bring Matthew with me um, to Grenada. He won't remember. He, don't re he won't remember. So I'm going to take make a con conscious effort to take Let's him take back. And then the other side, Matthew um, has Nigerian in him. And um, my husband, um, as much as he's Nigerian and Jamaican, he didn't know his Nigerian side um, until he decided I'm going to represent them um, as a high jumper. Mm. Um, you know, so he went through the process, got he renewed his passport because he actually had a passport from when he was really young. A Nigerian one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. he went to Nigeria when he was younger. Mm, mm. But, you know... Um, he had never been back since. So he made the conscious effort to go back with that. He'd done a show. My son, my husband was on a, a reality TV show, mm -hmm. the biggest one, Big Brother Niger. Mm -hmm. So with that, that brought um, a lot of followers, a lot of attention. And me being his wife and very supportive, I said, I'm going out there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my have Nigerian friends and stuff, and they're like, oh, be safe. That's I was getting things like that. Be careful. Like, nah, 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 I'll be all right. I went out there with um, my husband's um, best friend, um, groomsman. I said, mum, I'm going to Nigeria. I'm going to, because I went there because Mike was coming out of the show. And I mean, he needs to see a familiar face, you know. Um, we was married as well at the time. We just... Oh, your wedding video, by the way. I don't even want to interrupt you, but I, I saw your wedding video and wow. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's still my intro for my YouTube channel as well, actually. I, I never get bored of that. I never get bored of that. Milk yet. it. Milk there it. Yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful. Thank beautiful. you. So, yeah, went over to Nigeria and I loved it. I was only meant to be there for 10 days. Hey, I overstayed. I overstayed. You I was extended. Like, yeah. What was it? The food? The coat? Like, what, it was everything. What, what made you extend? The nights out. The fact that everyone, fashion, looking good was a thing. Mm. I was like, what? I can get my hair done, a cheap price, nail, everything to look good. Well, it's expensive. I mean, the music, 
the vibes. It was, and my husband also was like a rock star. And I was just there, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was known as Mike's wife, but people like my friends and family, like, listen, remember who you are, yeah? yeah. yeah. You're Perry Shane so Clayton, <laughs> yeah? Olympian, yeah? You're not Mike's wife. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, but that's what they know me as. It is what it is, yeah? yeah. I know who I am. But yeah, the experience in a whole was lovely. I really embraced it. Obviously, I went to school with a lot of Nigerians. I already tried the food. I'd been to weddings. And everyone always said to me, Perry, are you Nigerian? Mm -hmm. I used to get asked mm -hmm. that. So it wasn't a thing that it was forced on mm -hmm. me. I genuinely loved everything about Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Regardless of people saying, are you sure? You know, be careful. To be quite honest with you, you could go anywhere in the world and something can happen to you. Mm -hmm. you know? Even here in the UK. Exactly. I've been to South Africa, you know, and um, an incident happened to me as well. I got robbed. Who told me to walk by myself, right? Coming from training. I was in a happy mood. Someone saw mm. me and was like, right, I'm mm. going to target her. She got beats by Dre on. Mm. We want her. And that made me think, no, Perry, no, you can't just walk everywhere freely. Mm. But even after that incident, that didn't scare me to go to, about going wow, to Nigeria. I didn't know this, you know. I didn't know you'd, you'd Yeah, been... I've been for a bit. Yeah, but that didn't scare me. It's just like, okay, just be a bit more mindful, Perry. So mm. I'm very much up for exploring, embracing different cultures. Um, even down, like you say, Nigeria or say say Africa itself. People may think you're in the Maldives when you go to Africa. You know, things like that. It's like, let me go... Listen, we're all from Africa. Is supposed to be Zanzibar, yeah. all of that. You know, we had our um, ha uh, honeymoon in um, Mauritius. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so listen, I miss it. I actually miss it. I've not been there, I think it's probably been two years. Um, and I'm excited to go back. Matthew spent a good time there. He's not going to remember, but we're going to go back. All right. Can you help us settle this then? Is it Nigerian Jollof or Ghanaian Jollof? Sorry, it's Nigerian. Yeah, it's Nigerian. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, that guys. <laughs> <Thank you, man. laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Don't get me wrong, yeah. I do love Basmati rice, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's fine. Just plain. Mm. Maybe Basmati rice is fine. Mm. I can do that, yeah, mm -hmm. with my rice and peas. But Nigerian jollof. We yeah. thank God. Sorry. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I feel a bit, sh a bit embarrassed though. I need to learn how to make it. People be like, what? You don't know how to make it? I don't. I've attempted, mm. but it just don't hit the same as the way I've had it. But they say- Don't be embarrassed. I'm, I'm half Nigerian yeah. and I still haven't managed to learn okay. how to make it. That's actually one of my goals for this you year. You don't know how to make a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you throw throwing shade at me. What's, what's wrong with him? <laughs> I just, I'm that that one out yeah. I just have to put that one out there. <laughs> yeah, you see, he, he is the good cook of the house, so um, I'll let you have that one for now. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Go on, Teddy. I wanted to um, ask you about you know some of the tougher times in your life when you experience injuries, and um, I know that before you broke that record uh, back in 2013, it was off the back of an injury, right? Um, how how was it for an athlete, you know, from your experience when you have an injury and, you know, you're thinking, damn, you know, I'm out and I don't know when I'm next going to be back to to win again. Um, I, I want to be the best and this is holding me back. What what was it like for you when, what, what injury did you get actually? Um, My knee. Mm. So in 2013 in Moscow at the World Championships, I should have been coming home with a medal but I never, I was on top form, but during the finals, went over the first hurdle and I just felt my leg was wobbly. My left, my left leg, I was like, what? I can't control this. But me being me, I'm still going. Very silly, but I'm like, no, I should be further. Anyways, got wheeled off on a wheelchair, um, flown back to the UK, like immediately had to see a surgeon and I torn my um, PCL and damaged my cartilage. Yes. And the diagnosis was in terms of like recovery, they said they don't know. They didn't know how long it was gonna take me to get back because it's not common like the PCL mm. and cartilage. What's going through your head at that point? What, what's? I'm, obviously I'm, I'm in tears now, mm. right Teddy, I'm in tears. But I made a joke, I said, I might as well get pregnant. That's what I said. <laughs> My coach was like, no, 
It won't take that long. <laughs> right? Nine months. I was out for four years. Were you dating hey. at the time? Were you? Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. I was dating at the time. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. I was set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I made that joke thinking, like, yeah. you know, it's not like nine months. I'm going to be back before then. But it was four years. Wow. Uh, yeah. I was out for four years. Damn. And it was like, every time I was making progress, I'd get a knockback. Even the, 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 the story I told you about um, South Africa, mm. that was a knockback. I, that was the day I just started running and then I got I got attacked or robbed, would mm-hmm. say. Um, yeah, so I ran and then I hurt myself again because now, because of fear, I ran faster than I needed to. I was like, but it's like, what's going on here? So I had to have an undergo more surgery. Oof. Yeah, it was a, I feel like it was the toughest time. Toughest thing I had to go through as an athlete. Imagine, you're at your... I was on fire. I was on fire and I was just like, I'm only just getting started and this has now happened to me. Mm. So when I'm going through the rehab, I'm like, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. That's what I kept telling myself. I've got this. It's not going to be for long. I had a friend of mine who also injured herself and she made a comeback. So from seeing her comeback, me, I'm like, if she can do it, I can do it. Mm. But I I didn't know it was going to take that long to get back. And it, but it did, and I kept at it. Mm. So a lot of people have been like, I'm done with this, sorry. I was just gonna say, was there ever a moment within the four years where you thought, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm giving up, I'm no, changing? Teddy. Mm. No, that, that, that thought did not come into my mind. Mm. I was gonna come back better and badder. That's what I was telling myself. Nice. So, you know, I had to learn how to walk again. It was very basic, you know. Um, I was on crutches, wheeled in wheelchairs, like doing my food shopping, you know, in a wheelchair. Mm. But yeah, you know, I had to, you know, life changed a lot for me. And then you hear, you meet people who have who have had knee injuries and they're telling you about their surgery and stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Me and you are not the same people. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Because to me, that's just negativity. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. that. Are these the ones that did give up as well? <laughs> 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 oh, no. But you know, it's just like, I don't want to hear that. Just mm. come with, okay, I wish you the best. Keep yes. it moving. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I did come back. I came back in 2017. Got a silver medal at the World Championships in London. Ooh. So I was like, woo! Your girl's back. Um, and that was nice because a lot of people have written me off. And, you know, but I, I was still getting support as well. Some people actually do, you know, financially, they can't stick with it. Mm-hmm. Whereas I I was I was still getting supported by Nike. So that was Amazing. a big help. Amazing. That was a big help, you know. Yeah, I was watching one of your um your videos on YouTube and your your wardrobe was filled with Nike trainers. Mm, and you're like the only problem I have is uh, choosing which one What's I it? need to use today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was young and dumb then. Now I've got rid of it. No, I say yeah, I've got rid of. I have a, still have a lot of footwear, but it's all about my son now. Mm. It's like yeah, you still got a Nike. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, still got the Nike family. I still got the Nike family. You know, but I'm like prioritize. I'm like, uh, what does my son need? Yeah, you know? I can still, I can wear these days on days on days. Not have to, not have to change my shoes every day. The way I used to, the way I used to roll. Yeah. I'm a bit more sensible now, mm. you know. But yeah, no good times. Yeah, shout out to them though because they did support me during a time that was difficult mm. um but having that i was still able to train do the rehab um is that normal kinda... in, in 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 your world where you know sponsorships support athletes because usually i would expect them to look at this as this is not a great strategic move as a business now let's pull who's the funding next? when's let's the next for who's next yeah, yeah. yeah why yeah. do they believe in you right okay good so i did have a reduction in how much i was getting but it was still able i was still able to get by um you know, have, I've got my house, you know, covered mm. mortgage and things like that. But what it was, I feel like, I'm not, I've never actually asked Nike why, but people like my story, um, you know, I'm very much interested in the youth, being from East London, um, you know, now going into motherhood. Um, at the time, I, I was supported by Nike from the age of 16. So I feel like they saw it as like, they saw my potential as a youngster. She was just getting started. You know what I mean? Because I was I was running on the world stage, putting on time, giving times. It wasn't like I was mediocre. 
So it, it, you say like, yeah, she should move like business. They're like, we're done with her. They liked me mm. outside, I believe, mm. of being an athlete and what I've given to, you know, the sport and to the brand. Hence why. They bought yeah. into the vision. That's that's yeah. that's it. They bought into the vision of. Well, you've seen the you've seen the Jordan a movie. Yeah. When I watched that, that she was like, ah, oh, that actually kind of touched me. Mm. Obviously, I never I wasn't getting the power, the dollars that he were getting, but it's similar. Someone saw me, my potential as a young athlete, and was like, this girl's gonna be do something, and we're gonna see, we're gonna support her. I love that because you're sure that you you finished the Jordan movie eventually. Uh, right? I, I, I fell asleep Air, thirty minutes cool. towards Air. the end. But it's a, yeah, it's a very good movie. But it's it's it it did you you are quite right. It did shine a light on, you know, some of these big companies that most people try and say that they don't look at, especially particularly the the black community as well. Women, you know, they'll look at certain specific things and say they don't companies don't support this agenda but especially in that time especially in that time but mm. you, you had the support yeah and also oh, another thing um having a home olympics is a big flex mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a youngster we've got london olympics she's from london she's performing we like her yeah. that's it happened at a good time mm -hmm. sometimes it's just like um if you're at the right place at the right time it works in your favor. And that's that's definitely what I experienced because as well as Nike, those other brands that I was working with, you know, yeah, I was hot property. Mm. I, 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 I was, you know. You still are. Thank yeah. you. And I, I also want to go back to the quote you said as well. You were also putting in the hard yards. It wasn't like you were giving up hope that throughout your injury, you're gonna, you're not going to come back and you're just going to accidentally come back. You, you were putting in the... The yards, I imagine, as and, well. So. And, right, so I was putting in the yards um, on the track or in my rehab, but also, Teddy, I'm always one for opportunities. Mm. Um, so I was doing a bit of TV whilst I was injured. Um, so people still, people still saw my face. You would you would see her like, okay, she's she's still a, she's still there. You know, she didn't go into hiding. Um, so and I would do talks and stuff. So yeah, I very much stayed in people's faces, even though. I was going through something. Mm, and no one knew. No one knew. Because oh, I would come with a smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would look good the part, but I couldn't even watch my sport. I honestly couldn't watch the sport. Really? I'll be like, I can beat this one. I can beat her. <laughs> <laughs> but where am I sitting on the couch? Yeah. That was burning mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was like, mm -mm, not, I can't watch this. But that gave me fight. I was like, we've got to get out of this situation. I'm coming for you guys. Mm, you're looking at the time as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm moving. Damn, people beat my time. That's a, that, I laugh and can make jokes about it now because obviously I look back and I reflect on my athletics career and I was like, girl, you done amazing. Yeah, I very much hold my head up high and walk around like, I, that was me. You know, and my son, one day I'll show him, you know, this was your mum, you know, this is what I'd done. But that was that chapter in my life. Um, Yes, it may have not been the Olympic gold medal, but you know what? I've done my thing. Yes, yes. you live I, an incredible story. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I laugh as I tell my stories now, but there were times it was like, I couldn't talk like this. Mm. So what do you because want for your son? What do, you, you've got, you, you're, you're, you're an athlete. Your husband's an athlete. My son doesn't have to be an athlete. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. I know people are like, oh, I mean, it's in his genes. I mean, we'll expose him to a range of sports, but my son might not want to be in that field. He may make one of, he may not, you know, but we're going to, I say me and my husband are the best mentors that he can, he can have because we have experience in a few things. So yes, yeah, son, if you're going to choose a sport, don't do athletics. <laughs> <laughs> I told him that. Yeah, we've done it. It's like, yeah, there's so many other sports out there. Um, but I know growing up, that made that sport made sense for me. Mm -hmm. It didn't cost it didn't cost nothing mm -hmm. for me to run. You know, yeah. At the, at the beginning, I never had the right footwear, so I was wearing trainers that really weren't appropriate. You know, and it's just like. But, in terms of being an athlete, you know, from my working class background, that made sense. Mm -hmm. Running still brings me joy up to this day. Amazing. It like I go for my runs, um, even though I've, I've hung up my spikes. It's like. 
I'm not gonna have to, I don't have to go as fast as I used to. But it's just, that's the time where I kind of free my mind. That's my alone time, free my head space. Um, and that's going for runs. That's your so I did, I did think once I retire, I said, no, I will not be doing no working out. But I realize that brings me joy. Mm -hmm. That's how I like to start my day. And if I don't do it in the morning, I'm like, no, I'm not happy. Mm. Is my day is thrown off. Are you competing with yourself as well? Are probably. You <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> even, though, even though as well, my body has changed since, since I'm now a mother and I've had to accept that. But it's like, okay, I, I gave birth to a child. You know, mm. I carried a child. You just, it's learned to accept and it's all about, you know, enjoy, you know, growth, journey, aging, things like that. Yeah. Going on to that, what was the transition into motherhood like? Because obviously you have uh, you know, the athletic body, the mindset, and your body does go through. I mean, I'm no woman, but I know your body would have gone through so much change at the time. So what was the transition into motherhood like for you? Teddy, you know I worked out leading up to the day before I gave birth to my son. I'm joking. <laughs> Is that even allowed? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of workout? <laughs> Were you running? Don't tell me you're running. No, no, no. Very much low impact, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> it, at that time, it was like more like mobility. Okay. You'd see me doing a lot of like the hip works and things like that. But no, I wasn't going for any runs. Don't get me wrong. I was trying to ride bikes. I was riding my bicycle with my mum. was like, what are you doing? If you fall off, what are you... What are you doing? Mm. So yeah, I had to be sensible and smart, but I did not prevent the fact that I was pregnant, stop me from working out. So imagine, I was actually doing a shoot and it involved me doing some workouts, some movements. Whilst you were pregnant. Oh, yeah. The company's encouraging this. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, oh, I'm getting, what did I say? I've got um, cramp or something. That's what I said, I've got cramp. Little did I know, I was in, I was in labor. But, 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 wait, but when it's your first child, you don't know what you're going. You mm. don't you don't know what you're going through. So to me, everything's new. So I'm like, oh yeah, it's a little little cramp. Then they then my husband was like, pull the plug. There's this thing going on going on here. She's not even pretending now. There's really something. So yeah, that was a funny. I say funny story, but yeah, that night I gave birth to Matthew. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe being an athlete is definitely in his genes then. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, I, my pain threshold is definitely up there. The fact that I never had um, no epidural, no epidural, no, and I was just on gas on air. Yeah. And I what pushed that thing up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my child. I pushed my son up. Oh, I'm yeah. finished. I love it. So what would you compare the pain to? Hey, no. Listen. <laughs> Nothing uh, like SAS, I imagine. That no. I <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. It was like doing the biggest number two, mm. like a watermelon. Like, really? A watermelon? <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> watermelon. No, you not. No, I'm. Listen. Really? Oh think my about God. It. My yeah. Yeah. Think, sit on the toilet and it's a watermelon coming out. That's what I was going through. I can't imagine, I can't imagine. Cause yeah, I, that's what I went through. The big number two's killed me. Go, 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 exactly. That, that's what I'm trying to say. That's <laughs> where we were talking about that the other day. We were thinking, <laughs> oh, bro, this is a bit. <laughs> You're holding on to stuff. <laughs> Your legs is all like, yo. So you kind of know what it feels <laughs> yeah. like. Ish, but like, time's up by 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I've got a lot of respect for you women. It's, um... it's <laughs> impressive. It's impressive, to be honest, because... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I'll be honest, I never want to experience that pain. I've seen a few things where people try and replicate it, but no. Um, but in terms of like <laughs> transition, it was just like, obviously there's no manuscript to being a, to being a parent, you know, um, and you kind of just go along with it. Mm. But you know, I had, a, I had friends who had just given birth as well, like months oh, before, so that helped. Mm. So that kind of new kind of things to expect. Um, so, and obviously there's a lot of mums around me. So everyone yeah. was kind of giving the advice and tips. Um, socials are a big help. Could you start going on your feed? Like mum this, mum that, do, 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 mum that. Yeah, it all just kind of adjusted like that. But the transition, yeah, I feel like I just took it with two hands and said, I got this. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
I, it was it was an easy transition. Um, What's the scariest moment you've had being a, being a mother? Uh, maybe when my son fell off the bed. Mm. And I was like, what? He's in the bed. Then I had Duke. I was like, what? He fell? And then people were like that. It happened often, you, you know. But it wasn't too high because mm. I think, oh my God, what have I done? It was very frightening. But and then the first thing I want to do is go to hospital. Mm-hmm. And then my family like, is he okay? Yeah. He's like, you don't need to go to the hospital. Like, like little things. When, like, if, if he fell over. Um, the maternal instinct. Yeah, really. you're just like, oh, how can I help? But mm. yeah, it's scary. That was it. Really. I, you know, I think we'll be fine. I think I fell off the bed a lot of times why I've got a big head now, you know. <laughs> It's just one of those. I don't want to say anything, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine. What's up? What's up? <laughs> it's character building. It's character yeah, building. Definitely character <laughs> building. <laughs> Help me with the pain thresholds from early, you know. <laughs> oh my god. What so what was your what would what would you say to date would have been your worst moment? Because I'm getting a sense from Perry in your world, you're a very positive person. There's not much that would really defeat you and, and, and your mindset. You're very resilient as a person. What would you say has been your toughest moment to date that really you thought, oh, this is this is jarring? This is jarring, mm. yes. Being an adult in general, mm. the responsibilities that come of being an adult mm. and like, is that specifically in today's world, do you think? Like with the social media, the because obviously you've got an audience, like you said, you have to please. And there's so much that comes with now adulthood and even just the world nowadays, isn't it? There's exactly. so much going on. I mean, motherhood, I don't find like a struggle. I mm. find that quite that's quite fun. But it's just like the responsibilities that I have in terms of like, even just like you say, my living, my household, I'm responsible for anything that happens in my household. I'm responsible for that. And that can stress me. I'm so used to, as an athlete, if you wanted something done, someone will do it for you. Mm. You know, there'll be someone doing the admin. If you're booking a flight, da, 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 someone's going to do it for mm-hmm. you. You've got to be somewhere. Putting that off, you've got your passport, pack your bag, done. No, I have to plan everything myself. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, oh, uh, Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't need this. Mm-hmm. It's, just like, it's like, if you don't do it, who's going to do it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I am learning as well now, like, can you, give, you can give responsibilities to other people if you have that, what should I say, that luxury. Yeah. Not, not everyone has that luxury. It's a luxury. Um, and going back to, you know, like, um, if I was in Nigeria, it's normal to have people doing things for you. Mm. You know, drivers and things like that. But I don't live there. Mm. I live in the UK. <laughs> yeah. It's very expensive. Yeah, where everything is now just... You know? <laughs> I'll send you my driver. No. Yeah, straight What a away. life. It's such a good life, oh. isn't it? <laughs> Auntie says we need to go all the time for that exact reason, to really experience the side that people don't really talk about when it comes to Nigeria. Like everything you were talking about, the good stuff, the vibrancy of it, you know, the the, the rich culture that, that, that is in Nigeria, I'm just most parts of, of, Af- of Africa, to be honest. Um, I wanted to ask you, because obviously with a lot of the races you would have done, um, I think you talked briefly about it before, where most people assumed Perry had to be number one. She had to win. How did you deal with harsh critics? How did you deal with the negativity of you not potentially being where other people expected you to be? I don't think I deal with it well mm. in a sense that um, I don't want to hear negativity. Mm. I'd, um, I want to avoid it. Like um, Twitter was a big thing mm. when I was competing. And one thing I wouldn't do, I've, I've never done this, is search my name in terms of on, on Twitter, something like that. Um, if you at me, you're brave. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you oh, you're going to give it to them. You're going to give it to them. No, but well. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never give, I'll never give people what they want. Okay, I'm good. not. I'm, I ignore. I'm, but what I'm saying is, like, if you at me, more likely I'm going to see it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a notification. Mm-hmm. Now, if you t- write my name, it's like I, I went searching for it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go searching. I don't want to see what anyone had to say. Um, whether it be about my performance and things like that. I, 
I don't think I do well with that. Because I, re- I will remember a bad thing. All the good, but one like bad comments and things like that. I you don't always remember the Yeah, the, and the I, bad I, 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 I avoid, like, if I, if I do a show, do t- if I'd have done TV, I'm not searching my name. Because mm. I don't think I'll deal with it well. Mm. Yeah, it's, just, it's like, it's not even that I'll laugh at it. I'll, I'll start thinking deep into it. And it's like, I don't need to go down that rabbit hole. I mm. really don't. These people don't care about you, you know. Mm. How so, do you get yourself out of it? It's, it's my husband. Mm. Uh, he's a big support. He'll be like, come on now. Like, really? Like, so he'll be like, don't even worry about that. And sometimes I wish I had his kind of, um, his personality or his attitude towards mm. things. Because he's got a big following and like he's been trolled and things like that. He finds it funny. I was like, I wish I could be like that. Yeah, I just keep that kind of positive kind of vibe. That's all I'm about. Mm. And I feel like what you put out is what you should really should be attracting. A hundred million percent mm. agree with that. That's so powerful. And it's good that you have your, your husband as a, a bedrock for someone yeah. to... Just in case something does slip through the net. Yeah, because you know, he, like he makes... I'll think irrational. He's like... Come on now. Mm. He'll break it down. Even down to like maybe like, um, maybe if I read something or an email or something, he's like, it's okay. Like, we're going to take time and respond. Don't, I like to rush. Mm. And like, okay, I'm feeling this way. I'm very emotional. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll react. You'll be yeah. reactive to it. Yeah, I, I feel that. I feel that. I think we, we're, we're very much like your your husband in, 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 this, in so much as we, we do laugh at a lot of the troll comments. But I will say there are some where i'm like oh wow that was deep <laughs> <laughs> i'm like right that was that was that was a bit much how did you know how yeah you know? I'm like, <laughs> hey. i thought that yesterday about myself like why are you now you saying it like it's it's um you do have to remind yourself though and i think you always remind me of the fact that i'm i'm not what these people say i am and you know you are uh, uh, you know, you are someone that has got love around you. Yeah. You know, like you were saying, you've got your 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 family network. You've got your cousins who are pretty much like your sisters. Yeah. So we're very much the same, and we really resonate with. And that. they're very honest with me and open. So mm. it's like, what more can you really say? Exactly. Mm. If it's coming from them, yeah. Yes. Now it's like I need to address mm. this. And yeah. Exactly. Yes. yes. So how do you find balancing? your professional life, being in a limelight with your home life, your personal life. How do you, and, and and also I'm interested to hear about how that journey was of balancing your personal and work life whilst you were coming up. Whilst you know, everyone was like, this is the next hot property. She's gonna smash records. All of a sudden now you've got, your, you know, people asking you to do interviews all the time. You're on, you're on TV you come home and you want peace and you're getting you're trying to get into the zone every day how did you how do you do that and how do you still do that now so as an athlete like i said so social media in terms of instagram like we're just starting out mm, and i'm just gla- twitter isn't it twitter, twitter was, was more kind of the hot and you, you, if you want to put a picture up you can put a picture up no one knew where you was what you were doing so it was all kind of it's just it's just text mm. i liked that that was that was calm. Um, now, don't get me wrong, no. People know a lot because I've shared a lot. I've done TV shows, MTV. Um, so people have seen my home, yeah? And we're allowed for that. What, MTV Cribs? We've done MTV Cribs. Nice. We've done um, the Bumps. Mm-hmm. So people have seen. Mm-hmm. But, and they've seen my son. But of late, I'm trying to hold back. I don't want to share as much of my personal life. Well, I'll share it, but it doesn't have to be right there there and then. I'm going to enjoy this moment, let it resonate. And you, you don't actually know when I was there. I like, And I saw other people move like that. And I was like, I want to move like that. It's not going to be when I'm at an event. You're going to know I'm at the event then and there. Yeah, I used that used to be me. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, and people probably like that. But then I was like, why are you doing it for the people? 
enjoy your moment. And in, in, in terms of my son, my son does some amazing things. But everyone don't need to know. Mm. And it's from having him, I'm like, nah, he's precious. He didn't even ask. I think one time I tried to take a picture of him. He's like, no, mummy, no pictures. I said, you know, I'm going to respect that. He said, no, mommy, yeah, no, no pictures mommy, already. Yeah, that's crazy. You need to put yeah, your yeah, phone yeah. down and be <laughs> present. <Yeah. laughs> so, and that kind of hit me. I was like, you know what? It's wow. my three-year-old telling me that. Mm. So, yeah, my, of late, think my mentality has kind of changed. Yes, I do like it. But I pick and choose now what mm. I want to put out. If I don't post, it's okay. I still feel pressure that I had to do certain things. Mm. But it's like is that a protective thing for yeah. your son as well? I is think that, that's what it is. Yeah, okay. But Teddy, the thing is, when we was younger, I was loads of pictures. It was exciting. Mm. But then it hit me. I was like, no. I feel like as well, not everyone has a good heart mm. and wants the best. It's the way I think. So mm. I'm like, no. Got my family on WhatsApp. If I want to send it, I'll send it to them. Yes. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's, you're not all going to have it. The joy that I'm experiencing with my son, sorry. I know I shared the birth story. I know I shared um, the wedding and things like that. It's all right. I've done it. Mm. I know how it felt. If you do, whether you do it or not, things don't change. It doesn't really change much. That's what I've noticed as well. So I felt like, yeah, people want to see, people want to see. And it's just a swipe, seeing it to the, mm. might not even say anything. It's okay. So. I'm hearing a lot of, 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 of that in you is, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you're trying to protect your peace as well. Yeah. Around your personal life and the things that you um, really want to hold dear to you for, I imagine when you look back, yeah, don't get me wrong, Teddy. People probably think this is interesting. I want to see, and people, I'll get comments like, um, "Yeah, we'll see it all on the gram." Are you? Mm. That's what you're used to. Yeah, it was so much. Yeah, we're gonna know what she's up to. But I've not been moving like that mm. of late, and it's it's great. You feel good. I feel good. 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 You might get a little little snip. Okay. But that's because I decided to give yeah. you that snip. <laughs> yeah. And that fish feels so just a lot more enjoyable than I'm present with my family. Mm. Um, me and my husband doesn't bring argument. You know what I mean? It's mm. like, yeah. So much better. Yeah. And that, that's only recently I'm saying this. You like, well, last year, even the end of the year, you would have seen, I would have sharing so much more. But also I feel like, even down to the show that we done, it was a whole year, Teddy, after doing the show, that we was able to show share mm. what we'd been up to. Yeah. No one yeah. had any idea that we was in Vietnam, <laughs> except my f close friends and family. Mm. It's like, but yeah, the show still went on. You still, it still got whatever love, it still got that. Yeah, yeah. And what was the show like for you? Ooh, tough. It really was tough. And people, like, I've done many TV shows and they were like, yeah, do that again. Da -da -da. I've done all that. See SAS? That camera was rolling. Right, Teddy? It was rolling. It's, it's like... She's right. It was tough. Like, yeah, it tested me. I love the fact that people saw me in a different light. I was like, okay, this girl can hold her own. Yes. You they know, didn't, they didn't think that you could not, go. Yeah, the people were like, they'll see me like, oh, you done really well on SAS. I'm like, oh, wow. People, remember, it's still available to watch, isn't mm -hmm. it? So people were like, no, nah, you done us proud. I was like, yeah, I tried. I, I more than tried. It was, oh. listen, the, the things that we had to do, the conditions that we were living in, obviously me and Teddy had the, the, the jungle rock, Whatever. We were wheeled out of that airport. <laughs> <laughs> you were wheeled out of that airport as well? <laughs> we were wheeled. Oh my God. Weren't we on the buggy, Teddy? Literally. We were on a buggy. Foot in the air. Yeah, yeah just air, air out the feet. Air, air out the feet. Out, really? Praying for some breeze. You should have got insurance on your legs. Oh, we it was that terrible. That would have been good. That it was. Been good. But yeah, it was, it was brutal. And I think, um, I remember when the weather was so bad. There was a moment I genuinely thought they were going to, pause give us a few days let the weather recover yeah. 
and then we'll get back to it. The whole camp was flooded. There was fish yes. literally in sleep? our camp. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it was like pretty much go downstairs, toilet is there, you see some fish. Yeah. And it's like, wow. You're dragging your feet like through the puddles. Like that's how it was. What was that like for you? And you're like, I could be back home in my nice No, place. we could I yeah, didn't have time to think like that. Really? Because no. you're here in Vietnam. Mm. That's how many miles to get home. <laughs> yeah. It's not happening. Mm. So it's just like, I kind of fully immerse myself into the situation. It's like, this is it. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna roll with it. And I'm, I'm very much good at that. You know, I was like, right, we're here. You're gonna, you're gonna try and go to the end. Mm. Like, you can't complain. You might as well go home. You know, things like that. It's yes. just like, and that's what I did. What was the hardest moment for you on there? Walking with the jungle rock. That, yeah, that was that tough. Was Cause I was like, I don't, I'm hurting, but I'm still going through it. And that's the athlete in me you know pain threshold mm -hmm. but some people and people were like oh they're shouting how did you take it with people shouting in, in your face and things like that I don't think I got it that bad Teddy I don't think they really shouted at me that much because they nah. were like I don't listen I'm doing what I'm told I don't want them to come for me no, I watched you was killing it I, that, that, I was in focus I was like nope I'm not going to slip up I don't want I don't want them to have to say anything to me and also I feel like you feel pressure as an athlete as your background I didn't want to seem like, wait, hold on. She calls herself an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want to hear that. That's why I was even like, <laughs> like God, that's why I was going to end. And that's why I like, I was like, oh, you wasn't even the final girl, Perry. You was one of, you know what I mean? So mm. I was like, nah, was you really repping? That's how I was really mm. kind of, I was talking like that to myself. I was like, like, nah, you just should at least have been like the final girl. You're an athlete. Mm. But props to Danielle. She, she, she had it. Yeah, but mine was it. my feet, Teddy. Yeah. Because other than that, if my feet were not giving me problems, I was going. Yeah. yeah. Up until I feel the same way. Up until the jungle rot, I was. I wouldn't have been yeah. defeated the way I was defeated. Well, what was this jungle jungle rot? Remind me of the moment. And for people who haven't seen SAS, burns sore. Starts off feeling like no, we had white dots. On yeah, our feet. and you're thinking this is minor. Like, just, this is this is just my skin looking like it's about to recover again. Yes, and then it starts going red, and then it starts to burn. Mm. Then you feel like you got sand in between your toes, mm. and then it looks like it burns. Then now it looks like it burns, and it's like and even taking off your socks felt so uncomfortable. And I'm saying that politely, like mm. it was. Horrible no, it was horrible. Yeah. What was your biggest takeaway from SAS? I used to, say, I used to say like, um, I'm, I'm a hangry person. So basically, I would say if I, if I haven't eaten, I can't do anything. That's how I, that's how my mentality was. And I was very miserable. Mm. Hey, no, no, no. See, SAS, the food they gave us wasn't very nice, but it sustained us throughout it. Yeah. I was thinking I'm gonna want snacks. I need things in my bag. No, no, no. We didn't have any of that. Mm. But I still managed to get through the workouts mm. and whatever they asked of me. I never became hangry. Mm. It was like, ah, oh, Perry, just eat the correct things, that sustains you, and you'll be fine. Because mm. see me, I'm the queen of snacks. I love I've, a good snack. I, yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I've favorite. never enjoyed a, 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 a slice of just white bread so much in my entire life <laughs> honestly you know i don't even eat you bread don't like even that. like yeah you definitely eat I, white bread that, either. I was like yeah. this is gonna go down right now That's what was it was, we had like cabbage in some like ginger watery Oof. gravy but i was looking forward to it <laughs> With the rice, I was like, "That's my gravy." Yeah. <laughs> oh, just you me. Have you to tell yourself stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, gonna get yeah, something yeah. sweet. Yeah, a banana, half of a banana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just had to play, was, had to play mind, mm, my, like tricks in my mind. Save those moments, hundred percent. Even even the rest as well. Like I, I looked forward to like the hour or two rest we were gonna get. <laughs> I just thought to myself, "This is, this is, yeah." Please, let's just put our yeah. head down. Yeah, you used to take naps. Yeah. Teddy yeah. used to really like sleep. Me, I'd be there walking around nursing my foot. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Oh, oh. But Teddy would actually close his eyes and rest. Me, I was on edge. Because I think they're coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Teddy would be like this. 
Like, no, okay, you look so peaceful. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I never had time for that. Cause I'm like, they're calling, they're gonna call for us any minute. I need to be ready. So I'll be up like that, yeah. watching oh everyone's God. in, mm. like nursing my foot. Yeah, that's how I was, yeah. Very different, very different. Yeah, I'm thinking just... I need to relax right now, just settle my mind because this is just too much. What was, what was it like, um, you know, with, with the DS when they're interrogating you? I can't imagine what it's like. They're putting the bag over your head, they take you to the room, and then all of a the sudden, they're trying to uncover course, things about your about personal this, life. That was the worst part. Because mm. that, that that was horrible. Mm. I, I really didn't like that, Teddy. You know, like when you say you thought um, they would have stopped filming when there was a flooding. Mm. I was like, how long is this going to go for? You're taking me from one place to the other. Hands up. Lie down. These sounds are in my ears. Also, um, I was going to the toilet a lot. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's actually time of the month. Sorry to share so much information, no, but yeah, no, 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 sorry, sorry. yeah, safe place. This is a real place. Listen, yeah, yeah. it was a time of the month for me, so I was like, "Hey, I need to change, I need to change." So I was using that as a thing of, "Yeah, my excuse to be like right. I can walk." Yeah, so I was like, and then I was trying to check to see the time. If you like, for instance, if it's coming daytime. Yeah. So I was having techniques to get through. I'm like. No, we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving me jam sandwich. Did you get a jam sandwich, Teddy? Yeah, yeah. I was loving the jam sandwich. And then the dogs, there was so much that happened that I was like, and, but this is actually happening. It wasn't like for a short period of time. It was for a long period of time. I want to take time. you away. Yeah, wow. yeah, Even yeah. Even from the night before, it was a long, it was long. Yeah, we camped, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, we camped, we camped. Oh, so we it wasn't some... just... The interrogation we had to go through, we we pretty much didn't sleep because yeah. of the camping. Wow. Yeah. We camped in the evening. They took us away. I remember we were told it was probably eight to nine hours of yeah. that, that whole process, yeah. the interrogation. Wow. And what were they saying to you? How was that experience? So, okay. So we, so we, we, right. so we had to practice a story. They told us a story right. that we went to stick by. Mm -hmm. Me with my dyslexia self is really trying to remember the details, mm -hmm. but I was struggling. Mm -hmm. I really was struggling with the details. So when it's come to now, like we've got to tell the, tell the story, I'm messing up. So I'm like, they know I'm lying. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't. So I felt pressure in that mm -hmm. sense. I'm, like, I'm letting everybody down. Mm -hmm. When I've watched it back, I'm like, oh, it weren't that bad. I held it for a bit. Mm. And then I said, you know what? Let's stop lying now. Mm. Matt, come on now. Like, tell them why we're here. Because Matt was holding it. He was holding it down. And then even then, they threw the ice on me. He threw, he threw ice on me. Yeah, oh, you're talking away. about when you had, you had to lie about why you were there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, there was a whole story. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the interrogation, that's what, they, they, that's what they're asking. What are you doing here? So yeah, that they did was... not like Matt Hancock then. I remember they no, were the... really because yeah, he he yeah. was giving it back to them. That was <laughs> yeah, a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I actually found him entertaining. Mm. Like it's like, oh man, this man knows to how's to how's to how's to answer. He's you definitely really a politician. <laughs> with, in, Listen, I fumbled the bag. Hey, I'll be me honest, too. I really fumbled it. <laughs> <laughs> they took the bag off Teddy's head. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, did they take the bag? No, I remember. DS looked at Teddy and he was just like, he's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I think it's, I was just looking at the TV. I was just laughing, thinking the same thing. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm just in pain. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, <laughs> I ran away, actually. I ran away. Yeah, um, I remember. Yeah, 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 when they caught us first hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. They I didn't show that on TV. I really There's a lot of things that didn't get shown. Really? There's a lot of things, that didn't, yeah, really. There's There's lot lot of things that didn't get shown. Is. You know, they have a narrative and things mm. like that. So, you know, some. So it's good when people ask me because I'm like, okay, I'll tell you how it really went. Mm. Such and such happened. Da, da, da. It didn't go in that order, da, 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 but it's TV. Mm. That's how it is. You but... have to make it entertaining. Yeah. yeah they, they definitely do. Um, I I really enjoyed it though to a certain extent. And I would actually I would actually do a winter version. I don't know about you. Would you would you would you ever like entertain that? I don't like the cold. I don't She's like an island woman. Oh yeah, of course. I forgot. I, I, forgot. Like cold. I forgot. What yes. about like an extreme hot? Yeah, see, like desert, I think it'll be yeah. tough, but I would have been like, okay, I've got this. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think desert, I would have been all right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then wet conditions, not nice. No, 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 no. You look like the leeches, my word. Mm. No, I, could, I definitely couldn't do it. So just looking back on all your experiences, you know, tough challenges that you've been through in life, SAS, um, the injuries that you've been through, but 
you've managed to have so many successes on top of that. What would you say to an up and coming young athlete who, you know, may not have um, the resources, just just as you, you know, you were still running in Stan Smith's back then. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and um, you know, but you still believed in yourself and you're like, this is what I want to do. What would you say to the young athlete now who's coming up? Uh, you know, what words of advice? See, I see the beauty of athletics is, I think it's a sport for everybody. If you can jump, if you can throw, if you can run, there's something for everybody. Mm. That's the great thing. And I did actually have a chance of trying out um, the javelin, but I hit myself in the head. So I can't forget <laughs> that. I got long legs. I tried the high jump. Weren't for me. Because I, I didn't want to do a Fosby flop. Mm. So that's when you flip backwards. Right. All I could do is scissor kick and that won't take you to n- no world-class level. So forget that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say, I think there's a beauty in not being the best at such a young age because I wasn't the best at a young age. I had to work on it. And that's where my fight and grit came for it. So being talented as a youngster, to me, it doesn't always have its pros mm. because you become complacent and you're like, I got this. But then you realise those people who are slower than you will go past you because they've put the work into it. So my thing is, don't become complacent. The work that you put into it, you'll get out of it. I love that. I, I love really that. love that quote. It's amazing. And I think that brings us to our closing tradition, right? Yes. I mean, yes. Teddy, do you want to kick it off? What, with my acts of gratitude? Of course. Ladies first, no? Ladies oh, yeah, first, of course. Of I'm course. not a gentleman these days, yeah, I'm sorry. Of course, Sydney. <laughs> so the, just just so um, you know, and obviously for the people watching as well, we, we have a closing tradition, which is um, you, an act of gratitude. Mm-hmm. What you feel grateful for um, today, what you may have felt grateful for in the past that still carries you through to today. Um, and everything in between. So, what, 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 what are you feeling grateful for at this present moment, Perry? Hopefully, it's being on Teddy talks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Teddy, I'm grateful for inviting me onto your show. No, I'm grateful for having you. Actually, <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. But no, honestly, um, in terms of gratitude, I like to do it with my son, and we go really basic in terms of like. I'm happy for seeing today. Amazing. I'm happy for the roof over my head. I'm happy for the food that I have in my fridge that I'm able to eat. Sounds very basic, but not everybody has that. And they're the type of things that keep me to be happy um, and joy, you know. I'm honestly, I'm grateful that I get to see another day. I'm grateful that I just had my birthday last year and turned 35, you know. Not many people have got to that age, you know, mm. whether it's for whatever reasons. So my thing is definitely grateful for life, grateful for my son, grateful for my husband. And yeah, that's it really. Yeah, Amazing. I I actually want to end on that note because I think that was so beautiful. And I think um, it doesn't really get much better than that. Being grateful for life is is such a huge thing nowadays, especially with so much going on in the world as well. You know, there's so much chaos and it's that one thing and you've listed many things that can draw people to actually find comfort in being grateful for something. Yeah, Um, that's how I, yeah. You may be going through something, but then just draw it back and then be like, wait, hold on. Let's be grateful for that. It could have been this situation, mm. you know? So, yeah, I think that's just come with age and maturity. Yeah. Really. Experience. Because, yeah. My younger self wasn't thinking like that. It really wasn't. So, yeah. I've changed. You, you said earlier I haven't changed. I've changed. I have changed. Maybe not in the physical. physical. But, yeah, definitely in the spiritual. Mental, spiritual, yeah, spiritual. Exactly. Same Perry, though. Same Perry. Yes. We love that. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you yeah, so thank much for you. being vulnerable with us and giving us all your your life experiences, walking us through the no life problem. of Perry. Really appreciate you being here. I hope all of you have appreciated having Perry here on Teddy Talks. And again, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, please do not forget to like, subscribe, 
particularly if you are enjoying small gems, big gems that we are uh, delivering as well. Uh, thank you very much. No, I just spilled drink on myself. <laughs> <laughs> now we're good. Now we're good. Now we're good. Now we're good. <laughs>